of on your screen right now. At 17... Stage one, fuel load complete. There's confirmation that we've completed loading fuel on board stage one. At 17 feet in diameter, that carbon composite payload fairing is, is what will protect our satellites on their way to orbit today. The two halves are then jettisoned approximately three minutes into flight. The fairing halves supporting today's launch are both also flight proven, with one half flying for its 23rd time and the other for its 21st. After separation from the second stage, both fairing halves will return to Earth again to be retrieved by our recovery ship, Bob, which is currently stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, while our countdown continues to go smoothly, let's take a look at this short video from our customer, Maxar Intelligence. In a world of constant change, speed matters, accuracy matters, security matters, and timing, timing is everything. That's why we built Worldview Vegan. We've already had two successful launches that put four satellites into our growing constellation, delivering unmatched precision, but our mission wasn't complete. Today's launch adds two new satellites and unleashes the full potential. Up to 15 daily revisits of critical locations, six million square kilometers of secure imagery, trusted intelligence delivered in near real time when decisions matter most. This isn't just about seeing our world. It's about understanding it, securing it, and shaping a better tomorrow. Worldview Legion. Intelligence you can trust. Precision you can act on. Now at just about T minus four and a half minutes, Falcon 9 is tracking no issues and our payloads continue to be healthy. Falcon, there's confirmation that Strongback Retract has started. The Strongback or the Transporter Erector, you can just see on the bottom right-hand side of your screen there. That's the large trust structure next to Falcon 9. And we've been using that in part to help load propellants onboard Falcon 9, 9 since T minus 35 minutes. We're targeting to finish that fuel loading at T minus two minutes. Now again, the range is ready to support and weather is looking good for our liftoff time today. But if for some reason we do not launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at 5.42 p.m. Eastern. In just about 10 seconds, we'll have the TE fully reclined away from Falcon 9. The first stage is connected to a launch mount at the base of the TE and that structure is hinged to allow that retraction away from the rocket in preparation for launch. We've already heard it called the Strongback by the launch team over the nets. We use the TE or the Strongback both to roll the rocket out to the pad and raise it into its vertical launch position. The TE is also what we use to route the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and the payload until liftoff. Now, at this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Both the first and second stage should finish loading propellant about a minute apart from each other. We're standing by for that confirmation on board stage one. Stage one, locks load complete. Right on schedule. And we are expecting that fuel completion call for stage two at about T minus two minutes. The slight venting that you can hear right okay. now is totally normal. We do periodically vent the chilled gas from above the surface of the LOX tank overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. Ordinarily, during a launch, you can see those white clouds form around the vehicle, but today the best indication that we have that everything is moving ahead smoothly is, of course, the countdown and timeline at the bottom of your screen and those healthy sounds from Falcon 9. Stage two, locks load complete. There's that confirmation that liquid oxygen loading is complete on board our second stage. The next major milestone we're standing by for will be at T minus 60 seconds when Falcon 9 will enter startup mode. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will take over the launch countdown. Then just inside of T minus two seconds, we'll light those M1D engines for liftoff. At this time, the two Worldview Legion satellites continue to be healthy, and the Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. Ground gas closeouts. 
confirmation of gas closeouts from our mission control team. Weather is still looking green and the range is ready to support our T0 of 6.13 p.m. Eastern. And with that, we are proceeding into the final one minute and 10 seconds of our terminal count. Falcon 9 is in startup. Confirmation of startup mode. And now we are standing by for our launch director to give our final go for launch. Launch director, go for launch. So with that and just under T minus 40 seconds, all systems are go for the launch of Falcon 9 and our two Worldview Legion satellites. T-minus 15. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lift off. Go back to our go back. Vehicle is pitching downrange. In case you are just joining us, we are 32 seconds and counting, and Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center, carrying two Worldview Legion satellites for Maxar Intelligence. In just a few seconds, we'll throttle the Power and telemetry nominal. Confirmation there that everything's on the right track. And right now, we're preparing to throttle the engines down ahead of max Q, or the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the rocket. Falcon 9 is supersonic. With that call out, we know that Falcon 9 is moving faster than the speed of sound. Max Q. And there's confirmation of Max Q. Now, during ascent, we tilt the engines. The technical term for this is called gimbling, and that turns the rocket horizontally in what we call a gravity turn. Right now, the rocket is still going up, but we're also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. Our rocket MVAC typically, chill. there's confirmation of MVAC chill on board our second stage. Now our rocket needs to go about 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to earth and reach orbit. You can keep an eye on that stage one telemetry in the bottom of your screen as we move toward that uh, target insertion speed. Next, we'll have several events coming up in quick succession, and we should hear and see all of those called out by mission control, starting with main engine cutoff, or MECO, then stage separation, SES-1, first stage boost back burn, and fairing separation. MECO is where we will shut down all nine M1D engines on board the first stage, followed quickly thereafter by stage separation, when the first and second stages of Falcon 9 separate from one another, and then we'll turn Main on the engine cut off. MVAC engine stage for the first time. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition. Stage one boost back startup. So we have great views on your screen right now and confirmation from Mission Control that we've had MECO, Stage SEP, and SES-1. We also heard the call out and on the left-hand side of your screen, we have great views of our boost back burn, which is what's currently putting the booster on a trajectory to head back toward Earth and touch down at landing zone one. Next up, the fairing will jettison away from the second stage as it's no longer needed now that we're in space and the payloads no longer need that aerothermal protection. Fairing separation confirmed. Right on schedule. Those fairing halves are now headed back to Earth to be recovered by our ocean recovery ship, Bob. Stage one boost back shutdown. And there's confirmation of our stage one boost back burn shutdown. 
Now, at just about T plus three and a half minutes into today's mission, the next major milestone we're standing by for is our first stage entry burn. Getting some great views on the left-hand side of your screen of that grid fin deployment right now, too. Those hypersonic grid fins are the primary mechanical mechanism by which we steer the rocket on its way back to Earth. Nominal trajectories. Nominal trajectories there for both our first and second stages. Again, in case you are just joining us, right now our first stage is on its way back to landing zone one at Kennedy Space Center, while stage two is on its way to orbit to deploy two Worldview Legion satellites for our customer, Maxar Intelligence. To start the entry burn at about T plus six minutes, we'll relight the three, M1D engine, three of the M1D engines on board stage one, starting with the center engine known as E9, followed shortly after by E1 and E5 which is similar to pumping the brakes to slow down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow down to reduce reentry forces, which then helps us to recover and reuse that first stage. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing those Merlin engines, but we're still moving really fast. This causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust, gas exhaust gases. Great views of it on your screen there right now. Those exhaust gases are also known as the rocket's plume. That in turn deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle surface. The soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle, giving it that flight-proven look. We are standing by with these incredible tracking shots for that entry burn begin at T plus 6 minutes and 11 seconds. Of course, reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical scientific research. The Falcon 9 first stage supporting today's mission is about to perform this entry burn for the fourth time. And of course, meanwhile, up in space, our stage two continues to look good, and we'll keep bringing you those MVAC engine views as we have them. Stage one entry burn startup. There's confirmation of entry burn begin. Stage one entry burn shutdown. And confirmation Stage one is saved. of entry burn shutdown. The engines on board the first and second stage are actually pretty similar. They're just optimized differently. The Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust each during both ascent and descent. At, Falcon, at liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power. The MVAC engine, which Normal we have trajectories. a great view of on the right-hand side of your screen, and confirmation there that everything's on a nominal trajectory, has a much wider Stage nozzle. Stage one transonic. That wider, wider nozzle allows us to be optimized to 220,500 pounds of thrust in the vacuum of space. Stage two terminal guidance. Stage one landing burn. Stage two FTS is saved. We're hearing that sonic boom of reentry. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And confirmation that our Falcon 9 and booster has touched back the down on landing zone one at Kennedy Space Center and that we have had successful MVAC shutdown on board stage two. This was the fourth launch and landing for this first stage, and this landing marks SpaceX's 404th recovery of a SpaceX orbital class rocket, including first, 
first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. And with that confirmation, we also know that stage two is on a good orbit up in space. So with that, stage two is um, embarking on its first coast phase, after which the MVAC engine will relight for a second time at about T plus 43 minutes. That will be followed by our first payload deploy today. We're going to take a break and leave you with some nice space tunes, but we'll see you back here in about 30 minutes. <laughs> 